Here we go. This is the Escapade Show. Here we are. Number 23 already. Unreal, man. Second podcast of the week. And we're joined with Mr. Gavin Bell. Hello, Gavin. Well, hello there. Thanks for having me, guys. Wow, well, we've taken a while to make this happen, but it finally has. How does it feel actually being in here from seeing it online? It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, but is it it bigger? Is it smaller? Everyone says it's smaller. Oh, it's it's bigger. First person ever to say it's bigger. You can stay. Doing things differently. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So A lot of people, when they come in, they think it's like a big warehouse or something. Massive. Because... I don't know whether it's a camera lens or something we use when we're doing the live streams and stuff. It does kind of look bigger. Maybe it's our personalities. Maybe it's that. Mm. <laughs> Just like it's so big in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, but it is. It always freaks people out. They, they never know. So we met originally at Hamden, at the talk at Hamden, didn't we? That's we right. did. It's yeah. pretty weird to say that as well, isn't it? We've done a talk at Hamden. Aye, and Hamden, Hydro. What's next? So that. <sighs> Wembley. Oh, I, I, someone said that to me. Is it Wembley? I was like, either that or the Millennium Dome. Mm. That'd be cool. That'd yeah. be cool. What would you go for? I would go Millennium Dome just because it sounds cool. Mm. I'd probably do that as well. It's a building I've been fascinated, you know, with so big. since it happened, Aye. 2000. Then they kept it. It's O2 now, isn't it? I have no idea. Aye. No idea. It's pretty much the size of Scotland, so... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I would do it in the <laughs> So, yeah, so the, the Hamden is where we originally met. So for people who don't know what you're all about and what you're trying to achieve, which is amazing stuff... Can you let people into who Gavin Bell is? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, grew up in the Shetland Islands at the very northern tip of the UK. Wow. And uh, lived there till I was 18. Kind of growing up was always that entrepreneurial guy that was cutting neighbours' grass, going to going on family holidays, buying fake Armani, Armani belts, selling them on eBay, built my first website, 14, all that kind of generic entrepreneurial mm-hmm. symptom story. And... Um, <laughs> And then moved away from Shetland at 18, moved down to Manchester for a couple of years, tried to set up a business there where I was putting personal trainers into corporate environments to run corporate well-being sessions. That business totally failed, made zero money, um, was terrible actually, really, really bad. (laughs) Moved back to Edinburgh uh, or moved to Edinburgh and decided to help personal trainers with their social media, their marketing, marketing online. Saw that they were pretty terrible at doing it. So you're looking at trying to target middle-aged women that just want to lose a little bit of body fat. And um, the tra- personal trainer's Instagram's like six-pack abs and broccoli. Like I just saw their message was crap. So I went to, yeah. to go and help them. So I set up uh, that company about three years ago doing that and I've slowly moved that company into f- uh, focusing on purely on Facebook ads. And now we work with brands all over the world trying to help them grow their business using Facebook ads and and content online. And aside from that, also a speaker, also a video creator. So create a lot of videos around Scotland and um, now shifting more to kind of entrepreneurial videos as too as well. So keeping busy, creating content, trying to make people laugh and smile whilst, whilst growing a pretty cool business. That's pretty awesome. So, I mean, we we had obviously, the last time we met up there was in the Hydro. So we were doing an event for Fire Up Scotland. Gavin Oates from the Street of Knowledge. Gavin Oates, of course. Massive shouts to, to Gavin. You can check his uh, podcast episode as well. Episode eight, I believe. Eight. It's a while ago now. Good plug. Yeah. So um, how did you feel the day went? It was a special, special day, wasn't it? Oh, man, that day was incredible. Like, So Gav, Gav told me about the event maybe a year or so before, and I helped him film a couple of things for it. And um, so I've kind of seen the how that day is transformed from an idea to actually filling the hydro with like <clears throat> pretty much Scotland's population of young people. <laughs> and um, so to see that in Roa was in- incredible. And the day itself, like... It was mental, wasn't it? There's no other word to describe it. Like literally just seeing 12 or however many thousand kids or youngsters in the hydro and giving them a day of like just pure awesomeness was mm-hmm. like... It was such a varied day as well. Yeah. The, the programming was really good. Because mm-hmm. you had a real flavour of totally different businesses, you know, and you guys doing the YouTube thing in between. You know, it was a, it was a cool element. For me and you, though, sitting <sighs> in the backstage room, <laughs> uh, watching the show on TV, that's when it really started to really slam home, I think, what was happening. And then the walk from the room down the corridor 
seen that big clock, time to meet the, big, the best fans in the world. You're doing the walk that like Ed Sheeran and Beyonce I and I've yeah, done. Yeah, 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 going yeah. to the same toilet as them. I know, I know. That's what I'm saying. I could still smell the musk of Bono <laughs> in the shower room. <laughs> That's what That's it right. felt like. I mean, Bono Robbie was here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, I mean, how did you feel? Because, so you guys never performed on stage. You had stuff come up on the TV screen. Would you have rather been on stage or were you quite happy doing it like that? I was happy doing what we were doing. But, I mean, I'm never going to say no to getting on stage. That's, yeah. what I, that's what I really love to do. Um, so being on stage would have been mm-hmm. incredible. But having the video thing was... It was awesome. It was so good because I could enjoy the day and watch the day without actually being nervous about jumping on on that stage and speaking to people. So um, I loved it. And I think some of the feedback that me and Aaron got on social as well from parents of kids that were there that came and said they wanted to be YouTubers and stuff and and then had watched the videos and taken some form of inspiration is is pretty awesome. Like I, I always say when I go on stage, you might have a room of 500 people or in that case... 10,000 or whatever it was, even if you inspire one person to take a different job route done. in life or whatever it may be, job's done. Nice. And, and so we had multiple people come back in touch and say, so for me, it was a massive win. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. That's uh, you know, something that we've championed as well, you know, and when we do even the, small, the smallest of high school talks, even to speak into a, a classroom and to get a parent message. Um, to say, look, the co- I mean, even last night we were doing a the first ever young person led live stream in front of the famous wall. So there was a- uh, We had young, Fruit and Nut again. Nice. Fruit and Nut, they were headlining. It's funny seeing them first billing and then somebody warming up for Fruit and Nut. And I'm like, this is mad, you know, yeah. seeing yeah. the progression of kind of that happening. They're quite exciting Fruit and Nut when you're watching them though. Yeah. Um, but young Matthew as well, DJ Digit, w- watching <sighs> them do this, we half an hour sets each. And they're barely just over the height of the decks, you know? And, He's, he's, he's just getting right in about it, standing in the same spot as a lot of the, the best DJs in the world, really. Yeah. So cool. And for that, for confidence-wise, you said it to me last night, if that had been there for me at 15-year-old, 15-year-old Steve, for us, yeah. when I was first starting to DJ, and the reason the business really was born was because there was nothing. Yeah. There was no DJs or artists that wanted to really reach out and help To help me. By, yeah. and there was no one I could learn from, unless, you know, you went into Glasgow, and even at that, it was all a bit... You know, smoking mirrors really. I'll give you some of it, but no, oh yeah. Aye, you know that's I mean? the kind of mentality, you know. So for us to switch that entirely on its head and have um, that going on, like last night, that live stream for young people, the thing at the, the hydro as well, you know, it really does, it's brilliant to be yeah. able to do it now. And, and I do think the landscape in Scotland is changing, which is great. Having guys yeah. like yourself, having a podcast set up, you know. Love it, man, love it. So know, good. I, I, so I good love what you guys did on that stage where it, could, it would have been easy for you guys to take in the limelight and done the DJ set, mm-hmm. but you gave it to the yeah. to the young girls, which is, Appreciate which that, is awesome. You know, so many people said that to us as well. They were like, oh, mate, you could have said you just DJed the hydro, man. How did you not do it? And we're like, because the whole essence of the day was about the young person. 100%. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's easy to get caught up when you're the person on stage about making it all about you. And that's why I say, like, yeah, it would have been cool being on stage, but it's does the people in the audience get like the audience are the are the crowd, are yeah. the are the um they're the superstar, not the person on the stage. Well that's it. And actually you showing them what you do is more powerful than you going up there and talking about it because it's like, well, there's my YouTube videos. I'm yeah. actually really trying to become a big YouTuber. I'm putting stuff out there. So let's launch into that. When did you start the channel? What's the whole deal with it and how what's your plans to grow it? Yeah, hundred percent. So for me, it was a case of running the business three years ago, I think two years ago started the kind of video stuff. And it was a case of like I I know I need to get into this video thing, like to to build trust, to build personal brand, to grow the business. You need to get into video, like what we're doing right now. And um, it was, so I started to, well, basically my first ever video was how to get more followers on Twitter. And I was so scared of filming that video because I didn't want like friends and family, what the hell are they going to say if they see me recording myself? You just don't do that thing normally, right? And um, so I took my phone into a forest and filmed that video on Twitter in a forest so no one could see me. And it was terrible and nobody watched it, no one cared. And so I decided, well, I need to get better at this thing. So I'm going to start a challenge, 100 vlogs, 100 days, just picking up my phone every single day for 100 days, just uploading it and sharing it. And they were terrible as well. But what happened was you start to get a little bit more confident, 
better at kind of getting a message across. And by the end of those hundred days, I was like, right, there's definitely something in this video thing. Now I've kind of honed my skills a little bit. Let's go all in and start creating like a weekly vlog. A weekly vlog. And back then, a couple of years ago, it was more a day in the life of me. So I'd pick an interesting day like today, for example, and then film that whole day, upload it and show people what it's like to be a young entrepreneur running a business. And then actually this, so this is quite an interesting topic, but about a year in, I just, or six months in, uh, I posted a video where it was instead of like a business orientated vlog, it was more like a outdoorsy vlog and I filmed my weekend. And that video got way more views and I was like, oh, this, this is quite interesting, this is cool. Mm -hmm. And so I started to do more videos like that that got the views and they continued to get the views and some of them went viral. Like I think I've had three or four videos now that have gone over 100, 150K views. On YouTube? Facebook. Thanks. Nice. Yeah. And um, so I kind of got like addicted to that kind of views and mm -hmm. I'm not going to say fame, but like lots of people watching your stuff. And um, but what what's, and continued to do that up until maybe a month or two ago and what can what's kind of happened is i've ended up with almost two personal brands one is gavin is the facebook marketing entrepreneurial guy and the other one was like the scottish outdoors guy and so now i'm trying to draw that back so i realized it's going to gone too far down the scotland route which actually has no business impact and ha doesn't help me in business anyway and it's a lot of time kind of creating that like the only thing that's going to get me is a job as an outdoor scottish tour guide um <laughs> and so trying 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 to draw that back right now um but the, I, I don't really know where i'm going this story but it started off as a business thing went to more of a scotland thing because mm -hmm. i got addicted to the views and now trying to draw it back to the business thing but the thing is um it's very much like music i was saying to gal the other day about this like for me as an artist i can relate entirely to that because i got into hardcore music first and that got me into it, but now I listen to it and you're like, wow, I can't even believe I was into that. That's but just growing. It got me it? into it. And anytime I speak to any other artists out there that are producing music or any of them have, have reached a level of um, notoriety or whatever, they've started in somewhere and progressed into something and then learned about that, use what they've learned in the first instance to make their next thing better and then moving from each thing. It's actually a really good thing. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a sign of proper progression, I think, you know. But also, in your mind, what is the issue with having to bring it back to that? Because if you're obviously doing well with the whole outdoorsy thing, that's obviously something you enjoy doing, but it's maybe not your focus, so you're thinking, right, I want the views to come to what the focus is all about, but... In a roundabout way, they're finding it about Gavin Bell, no matter what the content is, as long as you're getting the views kind of thing, if you know what I mean. Yeah, the, the, I mean, the problem with that is you attract an audience of maybe, I don't want to... People that aren't looking for that. Yeah, exactly. So the core business is selling Facebook ad services. So I want to be attracting business owners, entrepreneurs, marketers. Um, that kind of Scottish content is not attracting that audience, which mm -hmm. is okay from a bigger brand awareness thing, but mm -hmm. from a trying to make money in a business sense it doesn't really make sense to focus mm -hmm. all our time and effort onto creating that scottish content so, so it's just looked at as maybe as a purely marketing exercise then to again brand awareness to put people onto you it to, should to be. grow channels you know guys rob Lipset or uh, rob Lipset, i think his name is <laughs> Lispet or something like that. he's a personal trainer but I he does, that, he know, does the yeah. 10,000 calorie challenges oh, and stuff. Oh, yeah. the guy eats so, for them. And he's, he's absolutely shredded, ripped. Looks great, you know. Um, great channel. Um, good guy. But he does these calorie challenge videos solely as a marketing thing. Just to get people onto him and then they realise actually he is quite a healthy guy. Yeah. So it's yeah, because like, then half of the health freaks will be like, oh, I'm uh -huh. in his marketing part. Yeah. Because surely if you're out in Scotland, do you never talk about that sort of marketing part when you're out there? No, so I didn't. So that's the kind of problem is it was more of a case of, here's a Monroe, this is a Monroe, it's 730 metres high. Mm -hmm. All this sort of like stuff that I'm kind of interested yeah, in yeah. the weekend, but it's not like my main focus. And it's another thing about it as well is it's really like 90% of my life is running the business. 10% is maybe going out at the weekend and hiking. Mm -hmm. And yeah, by me sharing just the hiking stuff, mm -hmm. people start, people, because that's all people see, that's all people think. Like perception is that, they don't see the 90%. And so just trying to drop back to kind of where I started with mm -hmm. the original business kind of vlog. Yeah, interesting. You know, um, 
yeah, I, t- I totally understand that, you know, and it's it's also good to diversify a bit, yeah. you know, and, totally and for us as well, like, we were talking about doing some quirky stuff for the YouTube channel. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I, w- I wouldn't say too much in case, unless it doesn't happen, but, you no, know, there's some also- cool things in the community, like, things that, talking about things that are bigger than us. Yeah. So it's not about solely business or us selling a product or a service. It's like yeah. something random but is loosely tied that ultimately brings people to you. 100%. And I think, I mean, mm-hmm. I think there's a, a something to be said in that where if I have been creating business-orientated content for a year, for example, and then I go and film a hiking video, that's cool because people are following mm-hmm. me for that and they go, oh, Gav also likes this other thing. But when your feeds are just pure Scottish stuff, with maybe the occasional business thing. People mm-hmm. think you're a Scottish guy first with an interest in business. So it's just trying to change those perceptions a little mm-hmm. bit back. And one, one of the things that I've got to be okay with is like the the kind of hit on my ego in terms of I won't get as many views or Instagram likes as I did before because the marketing entrepreneurial world is a, world is a smaller market. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's more relevant views, it's more relevant engagement. Yeah, and at the same time as well, it's actually... It, that is purely an ego thing because you shouldn't be worrying about the numbers. Like 100%. you shouldn't be because it's got to be ultimately about the content that you're putting out there. People need to get value from it. They need to like you. They need to buy in. And this is why I'm saying like your personal brand, for me, it would work either way if you're out filming, hiking and that because if you're getting 200,000 views on that and not on the business stuff, to drive more traffic towards that, I would keep pushing that. Yep. Even though it's not like at the forefront, but dropping seeds in there. Yeah. And saying, well, actually, it's my all, whole thing yeah. is I'm a marketer and a guy, but I, yeah. I like to keep fit, as we should. You know, so even the dropping nuggets of that, of nutrition and things, you know, because you're obviously into personal training and all that sort of stuff. So I think there is a way you can wrap it all up. It's just, this is the thing, though. It's like we have so much choice and options. It's like, what do you push? What do you focus on? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the, the same goes with a lot of the stuff we do. It's, all the time. I mean, I've got, you've got one foot in the music industry and then we're doing talks. So it's like, you know, what route do you go or what this and that? And ultimately, you've got to try and remember that there's, there's a limited amount of time in a day, in a week. It's doing, obviously, what you enjoy and balancing that with what keeps... Makes, makes money. Makes money, you know, and, and, and having a nice balance and then videoing all, all, all of it and putting the best stuff out there that people can tune in and enjoy. Mm. People love narrative, don't they? Yeah. People love to follow a story, start, middle, end. 100%. It's like what Gary Vee talks about in documenting your journey as well. Mm-hmm. It's like, how cool will it be in 15 years' time for me to look back and go, yeah. so I started that and I, yeah, I went that way and then I changed it and then I might, I'll probably end up changing it again. I kind of like what you say in terms of like an artist with the music. Like I, I do think video and content is an art mm-hmm. in terms totally of is. you're creating something that you love that you think other people will love and people will either tell you they love it or they don't. Mm-hmm. And, and you, yeah, yeah, just to suit. 100%. As you sail through it. But yeah. it's what you were saying earlier as well, like the sort of loose circle, like in terms of some of the ideas that we are having at the moment in terms of different content, mm-hmm. how it comes back, because ultimately it's stuff we're interested in. You know, it's not like so foreign or so alien that it's actually stuff that we're into. And like as a side thing, we would love to be doing these mad, crazy things. Well, like if we weren't doing this, it's not going to pay us. You know, it's but it's like it's stuff we didn't. Mm-hmm. The one we done, we were promoting a track, and we were out eating pizza, like we <laughs> like to do. <laughs> I got slapped in the face with a bit of pizza. And the track was called Hooligan. <laughs> so I had this idea to like do these be a hooligan, be a hooligan in these promo videos, and just be a total wido, slamming doors on people's faces, tripping up and, people and all that. Aye, slap uh, me with a bit of pizza. And I don't know where the one. idea came from, but it added so much more weight to the track coming out because it wasn't just there's a track coming out. By that track. Lost in the noise of a million Uh tracks. Because, again, the the, the industry, like video, music, is so much more accessible, so there's so many more people making music. So you've got to try and diversify your offering Mm -hmm. by Mm -hmm. attaching either comedy or attaching daftness or something to it. And and that's what we've done, and and it worked a treat. Like, Mm. the videos were thousands of views on the videos, and ultimately... If people like the video, well, there's a link to the track there. What's the whole point people, of this? No, but people know? were wanting more videos. Even when the tune yeah. came out, they're like, can you do another hooligan video? And we're like, well, it's kind of done now. And they're like, no, man. Like, what more. is he up to uh-huh. now? Yeah. What yeah. is he doing now? You know, and when he's like, you don't want to know. Give the people what they want, guys. <laughs> he's, he's in a dark <laughs> room plotting. <laughs> I, know. But, um, I mean, it's, it's the exact same thing that Gavin faces, though, in the market that you're in, because now we are in a world where, like, so many people want to be entrepreneurs. They want to be, you know, you, 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 you go on to YouTube and the first time, I'm John Pimpathy. 
you want to make two million pounds from one click, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, just put, just put your details in for 500,000 pounds and you'll get all this information for free. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, we're living in a society now where this is happening, right? And guys are obviously making it happen. Like, they obviously have Ty Lopez, Gary V, Grant Cardone. They're there on the American side, the British side, it's starting to really ramp up. Yep. Yeah, you're seeing it everywhere. You every, must... every, every YouTube it's just coming you up. Go on, you're getting something different. Oh, as soon as you Google yeah, something, that's when, it, man. When you're, you're done. In, when you're, you're in, finished. you're never out of it. You're done, man. Yeah. It's that's so... it. That's exactly it. By the way, once you're in, you're never out. Yeah. If you've watched one Ty Lopez video, that's it. You're but no, finished. but his adverts <laughs> are coming up in their 45 minutes. You seen Sam Ovens? Yeah. I'm Sam Ovens. Yeah. I'm going to teach him this exclusive <laughs> weapon now. <laughs> I know. So there's so many. He's, so he's how... Australian, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Something like yeah. that. Or I can you tell by the accent there. Yeah. How do you <laughs> differentiate yourself from that noise? Because as Stephen says as well, we see it in the DJ world, the music game, and, and there's there's nothing wrong with people trying to go there. That's certainly not what we're saying. What we are, I want to identify here and hopefully some tips for viewers is how do you how do you stand out from the rest? Yeah, well, I, I think like your your personality is one way to differ. So people Definitely. will buy into me. And some people will hate me, some people will like me just for the content and the way that I communicate on email and all those sorts of things. But I think one of the things that I'm really trying to go down is there's a big world, this, this world of well, online marketing is filled with crap. Like people promising quick bucks and like you say, make a million dollars with one mm -hmm. click and all this sort of nonsense. So one of the things that we are really keen to do is to tell people, I'm not your guru guy. I'm just a Scottish guy that became good at Facebook ads and now I can teach you how to do it. Um, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be quick. But the strategies that we've used have helped X, Y, Z and show them. They can work. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And like, people, no one's going to be able to turn a million dollars in one click, whatever these gurus are talking about. So I think your personality, I think the, you're quite right in terms of the outdoorsy stuff can still work as long as it's, as long as you kind of get it into the narrative of marketing um, that's which, exactly it yeah which then differentiates me because people go oh I like this guy he's, he's not just a he's Scottish he's marketing but also he's showing us what he does at the weekend and he's he seems mm -hmm. like a cool guy and he's got a cool girlfriend and whatever mm -hmm. like people buy into that narrative kind of call to action you know what I mean yeah exactly so I think with the personality and, and being mindful that I'm not this guru guy that you see all, all over the online marketing space is I think is, is the way that I think we're going to try and stand out whether that will happen in a few months a few years down the line we'll, we'll find out I'm sure it will you know it's about being genuine it's just enjoying and, the journey and, and you nailed it you know for people that are watching you can't really copy anyone else you can't really there's not a blueprint for a, the way someone's done something you really need to just be you and you pick and choose things, don't you? you I mean, you, you get ins you get inspiration, don't you? You pick up inspiration from different people. There's a bit of Ty Lopez in all of what we do now, I guess, from the start. There's a bit of Grant Cardone certainly in there mm -hmm. in terms of the, the fire and, you know. 100%. And that's a great thing, you know, of course, but ultimately it's, it's a soul-searching game. You're so right. Like, when I first started the videos, Casey Neistat was one of the biggest YouTubers I watched, and so you could probably look at my videos and go, bloody hell, he's a Casey copycat. And, you I need to start somewhere. and I probably was yeah. yeah but he was the only person I was watching who I was getting inspiration from but as you start to do that and start to follow someone else's journey then you you mm -hmm. you make it your own and now I wouldn't say I say I, I don't uh, look or edit or anything like Casey Neistat at all but that's where I started and I think that's fine um, it's about like taking like you say inspiration from different people and then making it your own and trying stuff mm -hmm. having fun along the way and hoping that something sticks with other people yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. I mean, Casey's great. Yeah, he, he's he's um, yeah, he's just over, probably the best. He done something. He turned vlogging into like, you know, cinema sort of cinematography or something. It just it made it such a, a an entertaining, nice watch. Mm -hmm. The stuff he was doing, you I could sit and just troll through all of his videos from the start to the new ones to skiing through New York and yeah, the so one good. where he said like um. He got a ticket from the place about uh, the bike lane thing. Yeah. And um, he just started. He started, he's like, well, if I can't go out the bike lanes, then I'm just going to stick in them. And he was like, you know, 
uh, cycling his bike into like a skip yeah. scaffold. <laughs> Seriously, the falls looked sore. Uh, yeah. and like like cones it's and absolutely signs. top class. Yeah, it's class. He's appealing to something that probably frustrates a lot of people. It's entertaining to watch mm -hmm. and he can apply his craft on He's it. Such so. a good storyteller as well. Like Casey could take lighting this candle and turn it into a 10 minute vlog mm -hmm. that has like the most mesmerizing story behind it ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's why people watch. But it is, it's like he's able to drop his seeds of like camera editing and helping people get and like getting good at filming through just living his life, going out and about doing stuff. But he ties it all back in and that's why I'm saying like for yourself, there, there, there is that element you probably could do that. 100%. Be yep. And then again, what's great about Scotland now and what we're doing with this here is that we've taken influence from Joe Rogan, legend, Casey, because he's got that whole 365 thing, which is about bringing artists together influencers together, mm -hmm. uh, musicians, uh, rappers, mm -hmm. all of that. What we're trying to do. Ah, and that's essentially what Escapade Studios is. It's not just about techno DJs or uh, trans DJs or whatever. It's like we're sitting here with, with yourself, Gavin, you know, and it's like, it's about bringing the cream of what's happening in Scotland, whether it's comedy, whether it's this, that, and not challenging in a negative way, but showing that it's not just STV or BBC or... Um, you know, Channel 4 that can produce content that is... Uh, watchable. Really, uh, watchable, oh, high quality, audio's on point, um, the video's on point, of course, you know, and it's like, it's great to be able to to do that. And that's solely from the fact that we're, in a, we're living in an environment now where we can have a TV studio here for a relatively, I wouldn't say cheap budget, but a doable one, you yeah. know, like, mm. he, and whereas before, even 10 years ago, that wouldn't have been able to Everyone happen. can have their own media company, which is, which is TV mental. TV station. you got your phone and you can broadcast You've to got a platform. millions of people. You've got a well, platform. Like, you were saying about that TV show Glow. Uh-huh. Um, and it was the first one was, was the idea was um, conceived by a girl, wasn't it? Yeah. And she basically had a phone and filmed the whole thing. Like on no budget, basically. Just for the idea, just on a phone. And that was, that's that it. was enough. It shot into so, actual... Yes. Uh, what it's at just now mm -hmm. is a proper reality TV show for, nice. for Scotland and mm -hmm. it's made a lot of stars out of the back, yeah, back yeah. of that and that shows you it's not really about the tools per se it's about the you know the person behind it you know and you really don't need a lot of uh, <laughs> no you don't do you know, you're a big fan of that show. <laughs> oh I love cool. it I've never heard of it no well you, you probably don't want it but it's, it's like the Scottish <laughs> Towie it was like the Scottish <laughs> Towie nice um, it's, it's mental but again I've never, I've, I don't think I've seen it it's, I've, it's I've, hats I've, off I've seen all of it but I, I've got massive respect for anyone exactly. like, with, with that level of oh, like, 100%, you know, yeah. tenacity coming up with an idea that. like that. Oh, okay, so let's just do it. Not going, oh, well, I can only start this idea when I've got a, million, a grand million, PC yeah. or I've got my MacBook Pro. I can only become a, a vlogger when I've got my MacBook Pro or my Canon camera. Yeah, I need to get my new it's camera like, and mic. Not, you really? When you can do it from the phone now, high quality. Mm -hmm. Um, as long as the sound sounds okay, it doesn't even matter what it looks like visually. Do you know what I mean? It's, even some of Gary Vee's stuff, it's like cameras shaking everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's, but he doesn't care really. Yeah. It's more about what's been said. You know? 100%. Like I, every time I stand on stage, the, one of the main stories that I tell is you go back to any of your favorite YouTubers, Gary Vee, any of these guys, and look at their first videos. They're all terrible. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of my favorite examples is uh, Joe Wicks. Do you know the body coach? Yes. Who he's now got 2.3 million followers, multi million pound business, four books, a TV deal, all, all this sort of stuff. But if you go back to his first ever uh, video on Facebook, Lean in 15, which is like the series that made him famous, 15 second. Um, 15 minute. Yeah, 15 second video showing you how to make a 15 minute meal. Mm -hmm. Go back to the first one, it's got nine likes, one comment, and that comment's from his mum. Yeah. And now you go plus five years. Millions. Millions. Yeah. It's. And, and it's like the main objections I hear to video is no time, well, 15 second videos, no equipment, well, he shot that on his phone, and I don't have a good personality, I'm boring. Well, you go back to his first videos and they're boring. The, per the persona mm -hmm. develops over time. It's evolved. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so people like Joe Wicks, Gary Vee, all these people go back to their first videos, they're, they're crap. Wine library TV. Yeah, they're so bad. I know. But you have to start somewhere. You do, and, and there's so much in the art of starting, just starting and going for it rather than the procrastination. You know, that, 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 that th the procrastination bubble in the middle of that is very hard to burst through, but once you burst through... You, you feel better. 
Yeah, you, you feel develop, better. You, de- you totally develop. I mean, before we started this podcast, this might have come out to the blue, come out of the blue with everyone, like, wow. But they go back to the first one, and it's on quite bad webcams, and it's all shaky and, and all that. It was a friend of ours came in. It was in a friend of ours done it, and, and but we loved it, and that was it. As long as we could hear each other and mm-hmm. stuff, even though the audio wasn't that great, but we've developed it and refined it to a point where we're 23 in now, and it's it, it's up there with something you could watch on the TV. TV, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and we do that these days with YouTube because every smart TV's got yeah. YouTube on, and most people are watching that rather than Sky or. Uh, yeah, love the journey. Do you know what, what I mean? I, I think people get crippled at the beginning because they're they're scared of of the, well they've got no audience they've got the only thing they've got to protect is like their ego. But when you get past that and you start to build an audience and then you're creating it for them. So I think people get crippled by that fear of, well, what will people say of me and what if nobody watches and, well, I don't have the right equipment and this person over there has got amazing cameras Mm -hmm. and they can't see the potential results. So, for example, Joe. Joe Wicks probably thought about doing Lean in 15 for a long time but didn't for whatever reason. But I guarantee if he knew that he, four years down the line he'd have this multi-million pound business as a result, he'd be, he would have started it when he was 18. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, I think people, because they can't see what might happen if they do it, mm-hmm. they, they struggle to start. Very true. Very, that's, a, that's good advice, can, it's just start, isn't it? The consistency is a hard bit as well. That's it, isn't it? It's like you do it, you make the start, so then how do you get yourself into that routine of churning, 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 and coming up with ideas? And the thing is, it's like any idea muscle, isn't it? It's like you have to, the more you do it, the better you'll get. So it's like you doing your 100 videos in 100 days, first 10, 20 days, you're like, oh my God. And then after that, it's so routine. Yeah. By the 100 day, you're like, you can feel I'm the rock man. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, that kind of confidence, which which is amazing. And it's just, that is the general feel. Because there, we're talking about Gary V. Started off doing wine. So, maybe, you know, maybe even apply that to ourselves and you. You know, you're talking about doing the outdoor content and this and that. Look at where he started and built it to a point where and he he's was he's not then, scared about chatting about it either. Not at all, not at all. So it's like that journey he's been on from a guy sitting in a room doing talking about wine to now vlogging, kicking about with rappers and putting tunes on and, you know, you know the stuff that he does he's, is unbelievable. He's, he's, he's got, he's, some of his clients are the biggest brands in the world. Yeah. You know, um, purely down to what he's doing online with his own brand. Because uh, even all the big, big corporations, if they don't move with the times... Because everything's changed, they'll they'll get left, they'll, they'll get left out they're as gone. well, you know, and, and that's why they're engaging with the likes of um, Gary V and all of that to come in and sit on their and on and, and on their meetings, you know, and, and strategize with them so they can be up to date. Did you see he put out a full meeting? Yeah, the f- that, uh, that he'd filmed a full meeting, like forty-two minute meeting, business strategy right. meeting, and it's just them all sitting around the table talking, and that's usually what he doesn't show you. Yeah. And he, he purposely has said that in so many videos, like now is the proper stuff that I don't show you. He's like, we're going to do one of them, you know what I mean? He's just, he's the master of like pure thumbnail carnage. Oh. <laughs> and he's like, he knows what he's doing. He's got it. He's got it. Well, I mean, he's got a team of like 24 people or something for the brand Gary V. So he's got like people telling him to charge his phone, where he's going, when, when he needs to sign books, who they're for. Like he's mm-hmm. got it nailed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely nailed. He does. And Vayner Media is a different thing. As well, isn't it? I you've, think you've got Vayner Media, Vayner X, Vayner Sports. I don't know all the different. What was his name, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean it's pretty cool. Vayner, right? yeah, Vayner, Vayner Chuck. <laughs> Such a weird name. So India, India. What happened there? I got really ill. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, so you went last year, didn't you? Went to India this year. Was it this yeah, year? Yeah, me and my old man went. It's a place he's always wanted to go, and um, took me along for the ride, and it was. Vlog opportunity. An interesting place. Yeah, yeah, definitely a vlog opportunity. Um, it's probably the most polar opposite experience to what my normal life is like I've ever, ever had in terms of you've got insane wealth wealth in certain places like a, I don't know, a temple like the Taj Mahal and then just five minutes down the road you've got like the poorest mm-hmm. poverty you've you ever can seen. ever imagine. Um so we went there for five days. I vlogged every day. We went and saw all the all the main big sites. And um, two days before the end, I'd start to feel really ill. And uh, I was really, really, like everyone said, you'll get deli belly, but don't drink the water. Brush your teeth with bottled water. Um, don't eat rice. 
don't eat veg and I can't remember all these different rules I had but I was I was sticking to everything like antibacterial wiping my forks and knives and kind of going overboard but two days before the end we were sat in a taxi and uh, it's like 20 minutes to get to the hotel and I just started to feel really ill and uh, had my North Face bag my favourite bag I had to empty all my camera equipment out and I was sick in the bag and um, for like two well the end of the holidays last two days I was just in bed all day horrible got back to the UK and I've never been so ill for like a week I was bed bound at home uh, went, to the, went to the doctor and they were like um, you might have malaria uh, I was like okay 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 <laughs> um, turns out I didn't thankfully don't know what I had but some sort of stomach bug or something got antibiotics and it was fine but it kind of it was such a good trip other than getting the ill and that's kind of left a scar on my my mem- like my mm. memory of India because it's so bad what happened with the, the Taj Mahal then because you wanted to film in there didn't you so yeah so w- with a lot of the places in India um, I can't remember the name of the company uh, the tourist body or something in India you're not allowed to film in the grounds and Taj Mahal you're not allowed to film inside but we went to one of the temples one day this was before the Taj Mahal and I had my camera my tripod my microphone and as I was walking through they were like no microphone, no tripod, we'll take it, we'll take it. And I was like, no, you won't. Like, I thought that, like, I was maybe being a bit stereotypical, but I was like, these guys are going to steal my, my mic and my camera and stuff. So I was like, no, you won't. And they're like, no, you're not getting in without it. Give it to us, give it to us. And I was like, no. Anyway, they, were, they kept on arguing. I agreed to give my tripod. And they weren't having my mic because that was like a hundred and something quid. Um, so I put that in my bag. And as I was walking around, I was like, I'm not going to get that back because they're at the entrance and the exits, the third part of the place. But it turns out that the Indian tourist body or something don't allow filming inside these places. And they, they think that if you've got like a mic and a tripod in that, you could be, I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm guessing they charge for film crews and stuff to char- to film at these places. Yeah, yeah. So they weren't letting me. Um, and the Taj was the same. But you're not allowed to film anything in the Taj Mahal. You're not allowed to take your phone out and film it or, or take photos. So. Fair enough. It's it's fair enough. I managed to sneak like ten seconds of footage because the tour tour guide told me to get my phone out and do it. But it was um, Taj Mahal, is someplace. You ever been to India? No, no. Oh, no. That's why I'm asking about it. You know, yeah, it seems like a quite an intriguing place. That different world. It seems like from from over here. Completely different world. It's like it's the the poverty was what like really mm. struck me. And um, but the Taj Mahal is like the most pristine, beautiful place you can ever imagine. But like literally over the wall, you've got terrible poverty. You've got like a river that's just filled with rubbish and so dirty. Mm-hmm. I've um, heard that. I've heard it's very dirty. It is, yeah. It smells and stuff like that. Yeah, 100%. But what I've heard is a mixture of the best smell you've ever smelled in your life with the worst smell you've ever smelled. That's probably a good way to put it. You know, yeah, it's like one corner, you're like, some incense. It's like, oh, that's lovely. And you go, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's some like, spices and all that. Yeah, so, and it's the same thing as like one rich area here, one poor area there. Yeah. It's a very diverse culture. 100%. You know, well, Rome's a bit like that, the Vatican. Yeah, yeah. Because you've got homeless sleeping on the steps of the Vatican, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's a massive amount of homeless people, you know? Yeah. It's mad when you see the just the, the, the golf mixture. and, and uh, I guess, classes, you know? The extreme wealth versus the... Yeah, it's crazy. And mm. I've never... Like, I've seen, po- I've seen poverty before, but not like that. Mm. Not to that level. No, it doesn't exist like that in Britain. Not like that. No. Now, I think just because of the nature of who we are, right, we could probably go on for about three years just actually chatting, right? So let's maybe get into some nitty-gritty tips, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Because okay. we've got a lot of young people that watch what we do, right? We've got a lot of people looking for advice and looking. And for us, we're all about sharing um, and, and trying to help in any way as we are also growing in our journey. So what would you say? Let's, so first off, let's kick it off with like a, a young person... 14, 15, wants to start a channel because we the amount of work we do with young people, that is what they want to do, right? 90% want to be gamers, YouTubers, right? And then probably 60% of them actually have channels, and probably less than that. So let's say half of them actually have started a channel. But for some 14, 15, 16, old wee guy, girl, whoever, wants to start YouTube and anything, what is your advice for them or like five top tips for them to, to grow a channel? Yeah, so well, the first thing we've already covered, which is just start. And I think the age of 14, 15, 16, the thing that's holding them back the most is going to be that ego slash their mates being ripping judged. Into them yeah. and 
Because like the first time I picked up my phone and spoke into it on Snapchat, I got ripped to shreds by my mates. And now it's totally normal. But back then, like that's quite a hard hurdle to get over, especially in school when like your ego and who you are is like your like your biggest thing. Like you need to fit in in school. And then when you get out of school, you realize you, you don't want to fit in. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So I think like the, the biggest thing for, for those is get started somehow. Even if you don't share it with anyone, you maybe just start a channel and you just start uploading videos. Don't tell anyone. Just get into that habit. And then you can start looking at refining things such as getting better <laughs> equipment if you need better equipment or starting to really focus on a topic. I'd say it's really important right now on YouTube to focus on a topic. And a lot of people... I had somebody in that age category message me the other day and they said, how can I grow my channel? And I said to them, well, what are you doing differently? They basically like <laughs> vlogged two or three times a week just sharing their life. And I was like, well, what are you doing differently? Why, why do you stand out? And they were like, well, I film my video going traveling. And I'm like, well, yeah, but how do you stand so out? So there's a million so other people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So how, how are you standing out from the crowd when your videos are shot on a phone and you're, it's not incredible cinematography that might make you stand out from the travel vloggers? And he, like, there was no answer there. So, I would I would say you you have to focus on a, a specific topic. So my views on Facebook, maybe not so much YouTube, grew massively when I went down the Scottish route and, and talking about Scotland because I had people from Scotland that I love Scotland and yeah. and were watching it because of that, and people from America that love Scotland and were watching it from that. I didn't get so many views before the Scotland thing because all the videos were about me. And I always say, well, how, how do you get someone to, to watch your content that doesn't know who you are? Or even better, share your content. Because if you want to go viral... You need shares. You need shares. And you need shares from people that don't know who you are. Absolutely. So you can't create content about yourself and expect to go viral because the stranger no on the street... No one knows who you are. They don't know and they don't care. And why would they watch five, ten minutes of a random person's life? They don't. So you have to create content that's about something bigger than you, that's different than you. Like Gary Vee talks about hacking culture. You take something that people are interested in, create something around that, so they then share it because of that thing. And because as a result of that, come back to you. Mm -hmm. So going back to the growing the channel, create, find a topic that people are interested in that you're also interested in, create a ton of content around that that helps people or entertains people. And they'll find you via that topic mm -hmm. and will follow you as a result. Cracking, cracking piece of advice. It's kind of like, like that whole yeah. Drake tune that came out, that key key thing, and everyone was doing that dance and stuff. It's like jumping on hot topics like that, checking out trends. You know, potentially, depending on what you want to do, if you want to be like a cultural podcast or something where you're talking about stuff, it's so it's so true because mm -hmm. so many of the young ones now are like, no, I'm the celebrity. It's going to be about me. That's great. That will come, but you've got to build it first before anyone even takes an interest in who you are. 100%. You look at all like the, the social commentator YouTubers, like the smart thing for them is to start creating content about Logan and Jake Paul because that's those guys are getting the views. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone's watching. So if, if you create content about them, YouTube then recommends your video mm -hmm. to people that have watched those videos, boom, that's how you get a viral you video. See, you see it quite a lot with uh, the UFC as well. So a lot of people have become big on YouTube Commentary. because they've put Conor McGregor on their title 100% Conor McGregor versus Khabib UFC what was it 209 two breakdown and just because of that title alone that's random where I make and whatever's got people watching to see what his views are 100% um, smart it is but it's great advice it's like the True Geordie. You watch him? Yeah yeah, yeah True yeah. Like he, I mean he started off doing the football thing and still does I think to an extent but He's become massive in the kind of UFC, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, boxing mm -hmm. world that people are now following him by default because mm -hmm. of that. They want to hear his pattern on And now it. they yeah. like him as a person. Exactly. So he could then go and sell products or services to that 1.5 million followers or whatever yeah. it is that he has. Mm. Massive advice, mm -hmm. as usual, on the podcast. Yes, we always try and do that. Now let's, let's shift it maybe to Facebook now. Um, you deal a lot with Facebook ads, running successful campaigns, things like that. So what are your top tips for people or businesses from hairdressers through to studios or whatever it may be for guys that are looking to get further reach? Because what we've noticed is, you know, we know the ultimate about algorithms, but like... Uh, all of that seems to be so down in terms of Facebook. So you could have a million people on your page and you're still reaching like a thousand people. Yeah. So what are the ways around that? Is it is it just purely pump money into it or, you know, what, what would you say? A couple of things. Is, is one, 
I mean, content's key again. Like, in my opinion, Facebook has a couple of goals, which is get more people on the platform. They've got two billion, so they're doing all right at that, and keep people on the platform for longer. If you're creating content that is keeping people on the platform, consuming your content, Facebook will show it to more people because it's what keeping they want to there. achieve. Yeah, and, and they want to achieve it because those two things means more more ad revenue. So if you're creating content that's good enough, people are paying attention to it, watching it, Facebook will increase your reach on that. And that, that's why my videos on Facebook with this kind of Scottish stuff did so well because the average watch time for a video on Facebook is six seconds. If you can get people watching on average 12, 15, 20, which they were, Facebook is like, there's a lot of attention on these, mm. we're going we're gonna to shove them out. So create better content. If people aren't sharing or watching your content for long enough, it's, it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. it, might be, it might be amazing production value, but it's not what people want to see, obviously, or mm -hmm. people would be sharing it and watching mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. Facebook would therefore share it with more people. So that's a side of things. The other side of things is it kind of is an, a pay-to-play platform as well. So you create that amazing content, but you still have to pay to reach everyone that you want to reach. And that doesn't have to be a lot of money. That might just be a couple of quid here and there to make sure it's going out to the right people. Um, one of my mentors, Dennis, you talks about uh, the dollar a day strategy, which is if you can create a winning piece of content that is like it shows that people are sharing it and watching it. So one of my videos was um, on an abandoned psychiatric hospital. And for some reason, it just popped and lots of people were tagging their mates in it. So I just boosted that one out for a pound a day for like six months or something because it was just continuing to work. And so if you can create content, find the winners, promote those out to, mm -hmm. to new people at small, like small mm -hmm. doses and just ignore the content that doesn't do well. Mm -hmm. Like you might create one piece of content a week, 52 pieces of content in a year. You might have one or two winners, like real winners in that bunch. Just focus on paying to promote those ones, like adding fuel yeah. to the fire rather than trying like to that. boost everything every week and therefore just wasting a ton of money. Because mm -hmm. Facebook will tell you to boost everything. It'll mm -hmm. say, your post isn't doing so well this week, boost it to reach more people. Ignore that and just focus on the winners. The, 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 the ones that are already big. Sometimes yep. you say, this, this post is performing 85% better than other posts on your page this week, boost this one. You yeah. know, would you say that's a genuine thing from them or is it just another way to try and get... It's probably mm. just another way because mm -hmm. people will go and hit that boost button. I, I, would, I would say look at your... Every time you post a video, look at your insights. Take a look at the average watch time. Mm -hmm. That's the key one for me. Is it bigger than six? Six is the average. If you're getting like 10 plus, then okay. I'd say it's performing well. And then you can look at likes, comments, shares as well and give you an understanding of if, if a video's got 10 times more likes or 10 times more views than normal, Mm -hmm. then that says that it's doing pretty well. Okay. What's your thoughts on, I've experienced this as well, with, with speaking to people about like, you know, when you go to try and boost a page to generate more people on it. And a lot of the actual profiles that seem to be liking the page don't seem real, or it seems to spike specifically in India, funnily enough, yep. or Argentina, or uh, some place where there's a dense, popu densely populated area. Do you think there's a lot of like fakery going on? with Facebook and it seems a bit out of order if there is disingenuous because they're taking your money yep. to boost to um, fake profile and if it is that way and it does seem like that a lot of the time um, certainly with some of this, the pages I've looked at and yep. seen you know any thoughts on that so be a couple of things going on there one it might be fake profiles if they are I mean, I'd struggle to believe that it's Facebook that are creating them. But what, what's happening really is your targeting is probably off. So when you're, when you're running ads on Facebook, you can run those ads to whoever you like based on any age, demographic, interests, behaviors mm -hmm. that they've shown online. If you're targeting people purely in the UK, for example, you shouldn't have that issue. Um, but what's probably happening when people are doing that is they're probably not targeting countries like the UK, targeting mm -hmm. worldwide. Mm -hmm. too broad uh, too broad and then Facebook works on an auction basis so as an advertiser you're competing against other advertisers to get on someone's feed so at any one time you've got probably thousands if not well, be thousands of people trying to target you with an ad might be because you're a certain age in Glasgow or it might be because you're interested in a football team or whatever all these different advertisers doesn't matter what they're trying to target you doesn't matter the interest that they're trying to target you with or the type of ad that they're trying to hit you with. It's just everyone's advertising, competing against everyone. It's an auction. So when you go worldwide, you'll probably find that Facebook will show your ads to people in the likes of India or Argentina because they're cheaper to reach because not as many people are trying to target them. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas, so to, to advertise in India, for example, is much cheaper than to advertise to USA. in the USA or the UK. So if you go worldwide and too broad, Facebook is just going to go, okay, well, we'll show all their ads to those guys because it's much cheaper for them. And then it looks like we are doing what, what they asked, yeah. basically. Mm, interesting. So that's, that's good advice for people as well, that. Really good advice. Because everyone is um, aware that they need to start at least looking at Facebook advertising if they want to grow their brand. So yeah, and I think, these, these I think, are key. I think for new advertisers, that boost button is... So I've got nothing wrong with boosting if it's done properly. So I'll put that out there. But that boost button for new advertisers is where they waste so much money because they don't really understand the fact that you can pinpoint 17-year-olds in Glasgow that support Celtic Football Club, for example. They don't know you can go that specific. And so when they run their ads and they boost it, Facebook shows it to someone in Kenya... Mm -hmm. And they've got they get no results, and they go, oh, well, Facebook's stealing my money and mm -hmm. not really sending it to the right people. Yeah. So now you're just focusing it in the wrong areas. Yeah, you've not told Facebook exactly what mm -hmm. you want it to do. Mm. And that's done through is it Power Editor or have they got rid of that? They got rid of that. Yeah, no, so, so that was the older thing, wasn't it? Ads manager. There's just a, an ads manager now. Yeah, and it's a like great campaign. Yep. You know, create an audience. Yeah, exactly. There's lookalike aud audiences as well. You can. Yeah. It is. I mean, you can go really detailed on it. Mm -hmm. I've had a, a good look into it myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it's some good stuff. Like you can. It's like anything. You just need to learn it, don't you? Hundred percent. And there's a lot. Like there is a lot to learn. So I'm not expecting people to go and become Facebook ad experts. And but just understanding that boosting out to random audiences. I think the number one problem people get is targeting the wrong people with mm -hmm. the wrong message. So they'll go right twenty percent off discount. Let's boost that out to worldwide eighteen year olds, and then they expect people to buy. It's like no. It doesn't work like that. They don't know who you are and you're targeting random people that don't trust you or care who you are. Yeah. It comes back to the content things. Like You have to create something that people want and spend money to get it into their <laughs> feet. And if it's good enough, they'll consume it. Yeah. Funnily enough, talking about Gary Vee, one of the things he's definitely been championing recently, which is kind of worrying in a sense, is he's like, if you're not putting money into your adverts, then you're going to get left behind because eventually, like, you know, it'll be £10, what £1's worth now. Yeah. It'll be £100, and it'll only be the big companies that have got billions in marketing that can do that when smaller companies will suffer because they could fling 100 quid in and still not get anywhere near. So it's like, do it now, because yeah. it's going to be too expensive. And that's his one regret from getting into AdWords when he started the wine company online, is that he never put enough money into it because he'd have made even more. Yeah. Do you not think at that point, though, with the nature of the internet, when Facebook got to that point, everyone would be onto something else. Probably, probably. I mean, because, you even look you at know. even look at Instagram ads right now, which are through Facebook. But like Instagram story ads are so cheap mm. compared to Facebook. Like I, I can't remember the last what the specific numbers were, but CPM, which is reach how much it costs you to reach a thousand people on Instagram stories, was like a pound or two. So I'm literally reaching a thousand people for a pound or two. Mm -hmm. Now don't get me wrong, Instagram stories, there's not a huge amount of attention there. See, I was going to say, at the, as soon as I see advert, I'm skipped, man. I'm exactly. Like, goodbye, that does my nut in, man. Exactly. It, does, it, does, it just does my nut in, it does. It's a fine balance, isn't it? Like yeah. Between advertising and not being cheapened. So do you do you want do you want abs like this? Thirteen minutes. Swipe up. Swipe up now. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it's like, but you know, it's, but sometimes it can work. It I guess it always depends on the person. You straight away you look and you'll be like, right, cool person, right, I bought in or absolute bail end. 100%. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's that fine line of how do you do it without coming across really cocky. Without, I mean, I don't know. The Instagram stories is a, is a hard one for me because yeah. I, I hate them, man. I, I hate them. I'm more engaging with actual Instagram ads because there's certain things that I have bought or clicked into, like apps that are yeah. optimized to what I'd like. Yeah. There was one Blink, as opposed to the story ads. The Blinkist app is like the it's like Audible, but it's like for reading books and stuff like that. Seen that caught my eye straight away. I was like, that's something I'm into. Learn more, boom, yeah. right through. So, I mean, I quite like seeing ads that are targeted to me. Uh, because I'm fair like, enough. Yeah, see, this is the thing. You might not like Instagram story ads, but if they work for the people that you're trying to target, then... That's obviously your opinion. You, you can not, your of opinion, course. You know? yeah, as of a, of as course. A, like a, you're not a marketer per se, but you are a marketer because yeah, your yeah, business totally. is like... We've got a completely different understanding of how ads work. And like every time I see someone offer me a... 20% discount and retargeting and I'm like I'm not buying that because you're doing that just to try and get me to buy mm -hmm. but the, the general person on the street doesn't isn't aware mm -hmm. that you've retargeted them no or you're whatever. right you're right this is why we're having the conversation out of all the platforms then what do you think is the best social media platform and where are you getting your most reach mm, I'm loving Instagram right now Instagram's the boy man love it you're, love it you're hitting like 100% of your audience yeah like Instagram stories and 
the, the engagement that you get on Instagram, like just people DMing you and you can have proper conversations with them. Even the wee polls and everything you can it's put so up, good. people just seem to interact more. Yeah, I just love it. Absolutely love Instagram more, right more now. people are on that, I think. No, uh, Facebook seems like a kind of older audience. Yeah. It seems from it, from just talking to people. Instagram seems like the, the one at the moment. Mm. Yeah, and they've totally Probably killed degree. the bringing those stories out. For the first time ever, I saw uh, a friend of mine, the same age, so 24, and <clears throat> he looked on his on his Snapchat and no one had posted a story in the last 24 hours. Like, that's unheard of for the wow. last six, seven years. I mean, I'd, I've not used it in ages, really. I've deleted it. Yeah. yeah. I don't use it at all. I don't use it. I don't use it. I don't see the point when the stories are now on Instagram and yeah. they're public, whereas with the Snapchat, they're just private stories. So it's you've got to stuff. be following you. It's so smart yeah. from them. I mean, so they've good. just taken that model. But it's the exact same as like PUBG, the game, or Fortnite. It's like one of them goes and then there's 10 of them sprouting up and it's yeah. like they're all fighting to be the platform, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like with the lives. You had uh, Meerkat, you had Periscope, and then Facebook are like, ah, we'll bring out Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. on. Dead. I yeah. know. But still your Ty Lopez's and all that seem to be going live on all, all platforms. I mean, yeah. they've got about 400 iPhones out <laughs> and stalls, like, where the things you've never even heard of. So, I mean, I guess there, there are people in these niches still as well. Totally. I mean, some wee guy who was on one of our courses last week was, you know, he kept going on at me that we need to do all of our live streams through Twitch. Some mm, wee guy. That's specific to gaming though, isn't it? Yeah, no, more no. So. no. Seems, to be, seems to be more and more, more people are outside the gaming world yeah, are yeah. going into it. Into He's it. like, do it, man, because uh, you can get directly paid even if you had one follower. Yeah. Like, you could be paid for that. It looks super interesting. There's, YouTube have brought out something like that, though. The paid memberships thing. Haven't they? What's this? On the new YouTube. Haven't they? On the new YouTube. On the new YouTube. No, no, yeah. <laughs> they have, YouTube. I've seen it. There's a. Right. I've not dived, delved too much into it. It's okay. a paid memberships type thing. Um, Facebook are in that game too. So. Well, they're doing the YouTube music thing, aren't they? So they're going Spotify with. Yeah, you've got that. And you've got Facebook that are now. Well, it's not rolled out to everyone, but some people have it where you can pay to be a member of a Facebook group. So it's literally Facebook group, click join, Apple Pay, £3.50 a month or whatever, and you get in. That's cool. That's. And you know what I like about it? It brings more power to people out there creating content. Yeah. And it, it allows for them to keep doing what they're doing without worrying about paying the bills or whatever. Even if they're, they've only got 100 global uh, fans or yeah. a, a, an audience of 100 people around the world, then that's enough for them. Yep. I know. And, and it's like, it's, it's given more people a piece of the pie rather than it just being solely for the people that can afford it yeah. or yes. the, the big, big budget. Like any, anyone can start a Facebook group now and get paid for it. Yeah. How cool is that? It's, I mean, it's amazing. You can't expect people to keep churning out really great looking content for nothing. It's like if that goes becomes your go to, like, so, like, our podcast example, if it's like you're like every day you're on the YouTube refreshing, waiting on the next one, it's kind of like to a point, it's like, look, man, we're trying to do what we can here, but I think platforms like enabling a wee bit of money and, and stuff to mm -hmm. cover equipment costs yeah. and potential travel costs and things like that, it's like well, people aren't looking into it, but they just expect it. And it's kind of like there's got to be a bit of come and That's go cool. here. <clears throat> it's to be looked into for anyone watching including us as well, you know, the YouTube side, what they're doing on Facebook, yeah. you know, it yeah. gives people, I mean, people are happy to contribute. Yeah. Yeah, it's they like are. a pa Patreon. <clears throat> like, yeah. I'm not, my friends are getting paid to create <coughs> videos for fans, where before they're like, I can never ask people to make money, I'm doing this for free right now, why'd they ever pay me? And then they do it, and people start paying them, and they're like, you don't ask, you don't what? get. Yeah. And people will, are willing to do it, they are, mm. they, they know what the new world's like, it's yeah. totally different now, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely, know. so... I think that's us. We're, we're about to wrap up here. Yes. Before we go, fun. though, what have you got coming up? Anything you want to talk about before you we want to finish it off? Tell oh, the people good. what's going on. Good question. Um, I would say just keep an eye out for the content that we're going to be producing over the next, well, next year. So we're going to start rolling out over the next couple of weeks, but next year, really just trying to push the kind of, um, kind of what we've spoken about at the tail end of this mm -hmm podcast which is just like actionable cool stuff on if you're an entrepreneurial person how to develop that how to grow your own business how okay. to market on facebook and like i say shifting away from the scotland orientated stuff and more towards that actionable stuff that can actually make a benefit to people's lives excellent so people can check you out on youtube 
Find me anywhere under Mr. Gavin Bell. Fantastic. So we'll be putting the links into the descriptions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll let everyone know about uh, Gavin Bell. Go and check him out. And we look forward to coming on to your own podcast. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. When, as soon as when we get that new one. get that going on. Yeah, that, that will make that happen. Yes. yes, so from vlogs to podcasts, thanks so much for coming on. Brilliant. Thanks for having Appreciate me. It. It's been great. Brilliant. So Gavin Bell for episode 23, Troops. What an episode. Loads of great information. Yes, indeed. Thanks again. And until next time, we've been the Ask Ben Show. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Outro music begin. <laughs> yeah.